This is Basil's Imperial News Network. Welcome. I am your host, Casimir Basilius, here to bring you the latest galactic news of GSACG1. As this is our first news broadcast, I would like to introduce you to our program. Here, we will cover a variety of news topics of our galaxy. We will cover topics both small and large from all around civilized space and beyond. Of course, as a busy Imperial Lord, there's no way we can cover everything in the galaxy, so we bring you a random spread of news on all scales to give you a slice of current events and topics. If there are any errors or glitches, it is likely due to how we broadcast multidimensionally. If you are not in our dimension, you are probably receiving this broadcast through a secondary source that may have been edited from our original recording. We apologize in advance for any strangeness. Now, without further delay, the news. Our first topic is a sector scale event. As you may know, the Galactic Council's various nations split from it during the Council Systems Authority War. One of these breakaway nations in Sector S7E5 has attempted to form a successor state to the Council with little success. Only three lesser nations have signed on with them. They are currently asking for former Council nations to rejoin them and resolve this conflict under their rule. The Council core systems, including the capital system of Tavel, have claimed that this is an illegitimate entity and urges former Council nations to disregard all other claimants to the Council, including the system's authority. Despite our long-standing conflict with the Council, the Grand Empire maintains that the Council core worlds are still the legitimate rulers of all former Council territories. We asked several people their thoughts on the matter. An imperial citizen responded, All nations but the empire are illegitimate. Who cares what they do? End quote. A very accurate and insightful thought from one of our imperial citizens. We thank them for their comment. In another interview, a council core system citizen said, All of these breakaway nations are traitors. Their governments ran when things got tough for the council. We will beat the system's authority and bring all these traitors back into line. End quote. How shockingly sensible from a council citizen. I would expect something about the proper procedures and paperwork, something about freedoms and independent national entities. I suppose this says something about how the citizens feel after this years-long conflict. In another interview, a council citizen said, We all want the same thing. The system's authority caused this mess, and we should all work together to solve it. Now really isn't the time for claims and all that. What happens after should be left to each nation's government. End quote. Now that's more like what we would expect from the council, letting their vassal states choose and all that. Wait, I'm being told that the nations that make up the council are not in fact vassal states, but semi-autonomous individual nations. My apologies. We also attempted to interview a member of the government in the breakaway nation in S7E5. However, they declined. They even went as far as to turn away the ship we sent. We do have the statement made to our ship, however, stating that they are at war with the Empire and they would not let a dropship full of Imperial conscripts into their territory. We tried to explain that conscripts simply serve any government role, not just military, but they didn't seem to want to hear it. Now, for some galactic politics. This one is a subsector scale news story. In Sector N8, a local election is underway as a subsector capital in the system's authority controlled territory begins its first election since the SA took power. Currently, it looks like there are two primary parties in the running. The system's authority fleet commander that liberated the subsector and the capital's local system's authority branch leader that helped overthrow the nation's former government. 
given the current state of the SA, locals fear that this could lead to a clash between the two sides' forces, as both parties seek to set up a power base in the territory. Outside observers state that the entire event is rigged, as no other parties have been allowed to run under the threat of being classified as traitors to the system's authority. Next, some news on the Second Galactic War. As the Second Galactic War rages on, little has been achieved by any side. The system's authority continues to maintain its grasp on the northern half of Council territories. Due to infighting and the loss of several of their allies, they appear to be focusing their efforts on undermining the central nations and holding together the territories that they have control of. Independent, non-imperial analysts believe that this is only a matter of time before the line the Remnant Council forces are holding falls. Now, let's take an inside look at an industry. Today, we will be taking a brief look at a lesser nation's asteroid material refining facility. The small asteroid complex refining and sorting 5,000 tons of ore a week is just one of many in the nation's asteroid field. The facility is one of the older facilities mostly run by actual workers, given the nation's anti-automation laws. The workers say they enjoy their brief stops at the bar after and between their shifts as the occasional mining ship or hauler drops ore off to be refined. The corporation that owns this station says it has no plans to upgrade or overhaul the rundown station as its quotas are able to be met. Asteroid material refining is a valuable and important industry throughout civilized space. We will likely cover more of this industry in the future. And now for our sponsor, Point Combat Templates. They got in contact with me after I mentioned some of their products before. Point Combat Templates is a weapons manufacturer that provides only the best modular equipment, weapon upgrades, and attachments. Personally, I recommend their infantry fighting vehicle line. The PCT-M IFV-3 is a top-of-the-line light IFV capable of mounting a wide variety of both manned and automated turrets while maintaining a transport capacity of 12 fully equipped combat infantry. It also has a manual and automated control mode with a crew capacity of three. Point Combat Templates also sells an armor attachment module that you can use to turn the light IFV into a fully armored heavy IFV suitable for more direct engagements. Point Combat Templates also provides a variety of other equipment and attachments. If you don't have a Point Combat Templates set of gear, fear not. PCT modules are compatible with equipment from most large corporations. If you need to switch up your gear or are looking to enhance your capabilities for any situation, choose Point Combat Templates. That ends our sponsor segment. Now a look at the life of a citizen. We have an interview with an Imperial citizen from our very own territories. Asking them about a day in their life, the citizen told us that they are a former automated production line overseer. They manage the portion of a brick manufacturing plant. Three years ago, they were conscripted and assigned to one of our Imperial fleet units. Their service was rather uneventful, and one year ago, their conscription was completed. Having acquired their pay and benefits, they say they wish to spend a few years wandering Imperial territories and entering the various Datanet networks before they consider returning to the workforce. 
When asked if they would take back up their automated production line overseer role, they responded that while the job gave them a lot of free time, they are considering signing a military contract for another two-year stint in the Imperial fleet, saying that they are considering a continuous six-year vacation, two-year service cycle for the foreseeable future. And now, an opinion piece. Most of what we cover are facts, events, and looks into the galaxy. But let's take a minute to talk. This news report covered a lot of the Galactic War, specifically the Systems Authority Council conflict. While likely to cover other topics in the future, it currently happens that the Galactic War is rather important. So, what do I think of it all? The Systems Authority and the Council are all enemies of the Empire. I personally feel that the galaxy has put a bit too much importance on the conflict. Now, I know it is the Second Galactic War, but let's be honest, nothing has really changed. I think everyone should look at the opportunities this provides. Sure, the war affects so many citizens of civilized space, but there is always a war going on somewhere in the galaxy. Make the best of it. As for the conflict itself, I don't think the Council is going to win. As much as the Empire wants the Systems Authority to lose, it is likely the Systems Authority will hold on to their territory, the Council won't reform its former territories, and the Allied Central Nations will make peace with the Systems Authority. Now, commerce and economy. The overall galactic economy remains strong. There is a continued heavy focus on military equipment as the Second Galactic War rages on. We are also seeing a strong increase in the value of the transport of goods to the areas affected by the war. This, in turn, has increased the prices of starships. We've also seen a decrease in the trade to the deep frontier sector of Sacred Grove, as focus seems to be shifting to the core territories. In short, general prices are on the rise, and we are bound to see an increase in the price of FTL gate transit and shipping prices. Let's close off the broadcast with a small local story. A local citizen on a lesser nation world of one of the unaligned territories recently found a cache of catalogued pre-terraforming species of their world in an ancient buried survey drone. The archive was given to the local planet's government, and they have begun modifying a copy of the archived creature's data in an attempt to reintroduce them to the world. While often a dangerous thing to do for nations with lesser technology, their recent advancements in biotech and the oversight of official scientific organizations ensures that this will be a safe process with only beneficial effects on the planet's ecosystem and biosphere. That concludes this news broadcast. Basil's Imperial News Network for all your galactic news of GSACG1, we hope you have a good day.